Okay, how's everybody doing? Welcome back. Glad you could make it. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, today, we're going to be working on this Minneapolis Moline G. It's a 1950. Uh, it's a good running engine. It's got low compression heads on it, which I don't mind. I just use it to uh, load and unload hay, feed cows. Uh, cows. I've got three right now, so I've had as many as ten. Um, so, not a farmer by any means. Obviously, by the kind of equipment I got, right? So anyway, this is, uh, like I said, 1950 Minneapolis Moline G. It has a dual loader. Dual. D-U-A-L. Yeah, that's right. I just read it. I know it's right. Uh, it's got uh, twin cylinders for lifting, and then it's got a single cylinder for tilt. Um, so what we're looking at today, though, on this tracker is uh, it hasn't run for a while because I've been uh, doing green feed, green chop but the chopper blew on the gearbox um, and I haven't been, you know, it's a gale so they don't make parts for that hard to find another chopper uh, they hardly hardly anybody uses a flail mower anymore so now I'm to the point where we haven't had rain for a while um, I've had to buy hay earlier than I wanted to like a lot of cow farmers or dairy farmers, any, any farmer with animals um, so when I was getting ready for our tractor show a few weeks ago, I was washing up other tractors. Well, I figured, well, since I got the hose out, let's knock the bird poo off of this thing and, I don't know, just make it look cleaner. So I did that, but while I did it, I noticed there's smoke coming out, out from uh, behind the dash. I was like, uh-oh, what's going on? Stand there and watch it a minute, and it doesn't stop. It's like, hmm, I better disconnect the battery. So I disconnected, uh... The positive post on the battery thinking oh that'll do it well the thing kept smoking so I just disconnected the negative on it and it finally stopped smoking um, I saw the wires up here by the starter order I had a little smoke coming off of them uh, okay they're getting hot so I've had enough grass since the chopper broke I haven't needed to feed now I've got feed here I need to get it off my trailer uh, so I'm ready to you know, be able to use the trailer for any other use. Um, so I need to figure out if I hook the battery up, is this thing going to smoke or is it going to start? Hopefully the battery's still good. It should be. It has been disconnected. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take off my wedding ring. I'm going to put this in my pocket right here for safekeeping. Um, I'm doing that because I'm working with electrical. Um, no, I don't have the, the rubber bands. I just got this tungsten ring. Um, I have had experience with uh, grounding my finger. The ring touched the body of a vehicle and the wrench I was trying to protect from touching the body when I was helping a buddy of mine work on his car at work to get it started. It melted to my skin almost all the way around. Uh, he was able to fling the ring off. It went flying. It was a gold ring at the time, and it popped loose uh, in, at uh, the connection point where it was soldered together, um, or at its connection. So I like to take my ring off. Electricity gets hot. Anyway, the first thing I'm going to do is be careful of bees. Bees love the backside of tin or sheet metal or the sides of your buildings. Anywhere, anything that the sun's hot on or beating on, making that hot, bees love it. So always be careful of bees. I'm not allergic to them, but I don't like to get stung. So, all right, let's hook the batteries up and uh, see what happens. Don't see no bees. It shouldn't smoke. I don't see any. Okay, we'll hook up the the ground. This is a positive uh, ground system, six volt uh, six volt positive ground. Although I don't know if you can see, but I got an eight volt battery in there. Just a little more oomph. Four hundred three cubic inches. You want a little? I sometimes want a little more oomph especially during the winter, right? 
All right, here we go. No spark. That's good. Maybe the water just crossed the wires and it's creating the short itself. Yeah, that looks clean enough. Set on there. See, if I was doing this, there's not much space between the battery and the tank. I mean, I don't even. It's five eight three quarters of an inch. So, I definitely would have shorted my ring out again. All right, I don't see any smoke yet. Turn the gas on. Take my handy dandy rain cap cover off. Let's see if she'll spin over. Give her a little bit of throttle. A little handshake on the shifter to make sure she's neutral. Clutch is back. Pull the choke out. Watch the bee fly away. on. Well, either I got a bad connection. Oh. All right, no smoke. It's turning over. It's slow. Hasn't run in a couple months. I'm impressed. Let's try it again. charger. Actually, it looks like I got plenty of gas. So we'll uh, shut the choke off. Yeah. Just hang on right there. I will uh, get the charger on it. We'll charge the battery up for a little bit and uh, we'll uh, see if we can get it running. So I've been doing some thinking, and I've got gas because I choked it, and it's warm out. It shouldn't have needed much choke. The throttle set where it needs to be for this particular tractor to start. So the gas coming out of the carburetor, and it's turning over. Is it my ignition switch not getting power to my coil? So I got my little test light. I'm going to go turn that switch on to what I think it should be on. I'm going to test that. I, and I should have power coming into the coil right here. So power goes into the coil, comes out of the coil on the next terminal, and goes into your uh, distributor. Of course, maybe my points are dirty. I don't know. Let's find out. Let's turn the switch on. Okay, got power. I don't know if you can see that. Let's see, let's, uh, let's move in closer. Come on over here. Oh, no, I don't. Where is it? Well, it was lighting up. 
change the ground oh there we go okay i just bumped the ground so there we have power to the coil you can see that we have power coming out of the coil we have power going into the distributor so far so good so let's pop the cap right here and here uh, maybe I can't get your finger in there to push on that spring there we go a little cobweb that never hurt nothing got brass contacts in there and they all look clean thing if it did light up it would burn all the cobwebs out Oh, let's take the rotor off. It's a little corroded right there. A little rusty on the contact there. Let's dig a little deeper. This is called the dust cover on this mo on these uh, holder tractors. Unreplaceable. Ooh. Let's see if we got spark. Ah, the points are dirty. So, let me grab my points file and uh, we'll get that cleaned up. Okay, got the points file. Right here, that's where the points are. I have the power shut off now because I didn't want to clean it and then get electrocuted. Never fun. Anyway, this here has a little bump on the plastic. Right there. Let's see. Right here has a little bump. You can see this. It's got flat spots on this cam lobe. Right here, on this shaft here. Down below, there's bumps on it. All the plastic here rubs on those bumps there, which... When the engine turns over, it's opening and closing the points, creating your spark. So, when you have, oh, where are we? There we are. You got con, got dirty contacts. You have no spark. Let's get them cleaned up a little bit. I have what's left. Oh, where are we? I have what's left of a points file. See, it's broke off. Works just as good. Open that up. Run that through a little bit. You see, there's a little corrosion in there coming off, a little white stuff. out of the way now I just use let the spring do its own pressure and I'm gonna put light pressure on it it's hard to do with one hand like everybody on any other video says it's easier with two hands let's see I'm gonna put pressure with that finger there I'm gonna work the file with the other hand some more crud out of there. All right, let's go turn the power on and see if we get some spark out of that. Oop, fingers out of the way. Hopefully that's on. Let's see. I got the test light set up. See if we got power here. We do. Alright, let's see if we got we got power out to this side. Oh. There we go. 
Yeah, she's short, so we got power. All right. So get that out of the way. I'm going to get a screwdriver to play with. Instead of my finger or a file with no plastic handle. Oh, here we go. Sorry about that. Okay, we got some pop there. So next step is where are we got? It's a little rusty on top. You can see the tip down here. It's a little corroded. So I'm going to get that cleaned up next. And then we'll put it back together and see if we can get it to pop off. Okay, I use my points file here. There we go. And I filed off the tip. I was going to get a piece of sandpaper or scotch bright. I cleaned off the, the contact right here, got the rest off of that. So uh, let's put it together and see if we can get this to start. Now, don't get me wrong, you don't have to use uh, a points file to let's get that out of there. You don't have to use a points file to clean your points. You can use a, uh, a brown paper bag, just a piece of it. It's coarse enough, you just uh, put it in between the points, or the contacts on the points. Put it between the contacts, and then uh, put some pressure on it with your finger. Not a lot, because you don't want to tear the, the... It's just a piece of brown paper bag, about yay big is all you need. You put it between the points, put light pressure on the points, on the points with the ignition turned off, no power, and you pull it through. You just push on the contact that, uh, on the arm I was put, showing you earlier, and uh, it'll clean it just enough. All right. Step one, put the dust cover on. Now these things have a, a spot where it does need to sit. It has a wide spot here for a wide tab. So it's going to only sit in that one spot. Like that. Put the rotor back on. Again, it has a little notch on there and a notch on there that line up. There we go. Look at the dust cover one more time. Well, there's a little some black stuff on there that came off with my finger just rubbing on it. That a little bit more junk out of there. Okay, we're going to lock that on. Again, this has notches, a big notch. Oops, excuse me. Yep. It has a little notch right here that's going to sit on the notch, little groove there. Snap the clip back on, hopefully. One finger, that's a pretty stiff clip. There we go. Okay, we're locked in. The stuff off the hood. And we'll see if this thing will start. got the battery charger on it. I have a six, six volt, 12 volt charging uh, battery or battery charger. Um, I've got it set on six volt on 15 amp for uh, my eight volt battery. Just takes longer to charge an eight volt, but still does the job. So. Handshake, make sure she's neutral. We know it's on. It may not need choke, so let's see what happens. <laughs> Happening. Well, no, I had 
gas coming out of the carburetor. All this sounds pretty empty. Maybe I should stop and take a look. Yeah, she's pretty dry. Let's get some gas in this and uh, we'll see if that takes care of it. So I wasn't going to show this part, but uh, the way this loader is, as the cross brace is going across here and uh, a couple of hydraulic lines right here and here, you can't get to the fuel tank filler. So if I was to use the gas can and just try and dump over, which it's you know about seven, eight inches above the fuel neck, filler neck, that uh, I'd probably stand, uh, spill about 10 bucks worth of gas all over the gas tank, right? Who can afford that nowadays? So when I first got the tractor, there we go. I had this funnel. I bought the funnel thinking it would reach. The funnel only goes to here. Well, I come up that much short. Well, the first time I tried it, and sure enough, gas goes down. Most of it went in the tank. It splashed out a little bit. But that's when gas was cheap. Well, I still didn't like it. So I looked around my shop. I found this one inch uh, radiator hose. It's about, you know what, about a foot long slid it over here because you know the neck of the the end of this is tapered on the funnel slid it on until it was tight drops in fill up no spill so no mess all the gas goes in the tank and uh, i'm happy Try to start it again. I got the hay unstrapped. Uh, hopefully, it starts. We get this thing unloaded. I've been at this since uh, before lunch. What was that 10 30, 11 o'clock? I got started on this, and it's uh, about 2 30 right now. So, uh, let's see if it'll run. everybody doing? Welcome back. Glad you could make it. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, today we're going to be working on this Minneapolis Moline G. It's a 1950. Uh, it's a good running engine. It's got low compression heads on it, which I don't mind. I just use it to uh, load and unload hay, feed cows. Uh, cows. I've got three right now, so I've had as many as ten. Um, so, not a farmer by any means. Obviously, by the kind of equipment I got, right? So anyway, this is uh, like I said, 1950 Minneapolis Moline G. It has a do-all loader, do-all, D-U-A-L. Yeah, that's right. I just read it. I know it's right. Uh, it's got uh, twin cylinders for lifting, and then it's got a single cylinder for tilt. Um, so what we're looking at today, though, on this tractor is uh, it hasn't run for a while because I've been uh, doing green feed, green chop but the chopper blew on the gearbox um, and I haven't been you know, it's a gale so they don't make parts for that hard to find another chopper uh, they hardly hardly anybody uses a flail mower anymore so now I'm to the point where we haven't had rain for a while um, I've had to buy hay earlier than I wanted to like a lot of cattle farmers or dairy farmers any, any farmer with animals um, so when I was getting ready for our tractor show a few weeks ago, I was washing up other tractors. Well, I figured, well, since I got the hose out, let's knock the bird poo off of this thing and 
I don't know, just make it look cleaner. So I did that, but while I did it, I noticed there's smoke coming out, out from uh, behind the dash. It's like, uh-oh, what's going on? Stand there and watch it a minute, and it doesn't stop. It's like, hmm, I better disconnect the battery. So I disconnected uh, the positive posts on the battery, thinking, oh, that'll do it. Well, the thing kept smoking, so I just disconnected the negative on it. And it finally stopped smoking. Um, I saw the wires up here by the starter order. I had a little smoke coming off of them. Uh, okay, they're getting hot. So I've had enough grass since the chopper broke. I haven't needed to feed. Now I've got feed here. I need to get it off my trailer. Uh, so I'm ready to you know, be able to use the trailer for any other use. Um, so I need to figure out if I hook the battery up, is this thing gonna smoke or is it gonna start? Hopefully the battery's still good. It should be. It has been disconnected. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take off my wedding ring. I'm going to put this in my pocket right here for safekeeping. Um, I'm doing that because I'm working with electrical. Um, no, I don't have the the rubber bands. I just got this tungsten ring. Um, I have had experience with. Uh, grounding my finger the ring touched the body of a vehicle and the wrench I was trying to protect from touching the body when I was helping a buddy of mine work on his car at work to get it started it melted to my skin almost all the way around uh, I was able to fling the ring off it went flying it was a gold ring at the time and it popped loose uh, and at uh, the connection point where it was soldered together um, or at its connection so I like to take my ring off. Electricity gets hot. Anyway, the first thing I'm going to do is be careful of bees. Bees love the backside of tin or sheet metal or the sides of your buildings. Anywhere. Anything that the sun's hot on or beating on, making that hot, bees love it. So always be careful of bees. I'm not allergic to them, but I don't like to get stung. So. All right, let's hook the batteries up and uh, see what happens. Don't see no bees. I mean, it shouldn't smoke. I don't see any. Okay, we'll hook up the the ground. This is a positive uh, ground system, six volt, uh, six volt positive ground. Although I don't know if you can see, but I got eight volt battery in there. Just a little more oomph. Four hundred three cubic inches. You want a little? I sometimes want a little more oomph, especially during the winter, right? All right, here we go. No spark. That's good. Maybe the water just crossed the wires and it's creating the short itself. Yeah, that looks clean enough. Just set on there. See, if I was doing this, there's not much space between the battery and the tank. I mean, I don't even... Five eighths three quarters of an inch. So I definitely would have shorted my ring out again. All right, I don't see any smoke yet. Turn the gas on. Take my handy dandy ring cap cover off. Let's see if she'll spin over. bit of throttle. A little handshake on the shifter to make sure she's neutral. Clutch is back. Pull the choke out. Watch the bee fly away. Alright, ignition on. I got a bad connection. Oh. Alright, 
no smoke. It's turning over. It's slow. It hasn't run in a couple months. I'm impressed. Try it again. All right, the battery's getting low. I'm not going to keep pushing it. I'm going to go get the battery charger. Actually, it looks like I got plenty of gas. So we'll uh, shut the choke off. Yeah, just hang on right there. I will uh, get the charger on it. We'll charge the battery up for a little bit, and uh, we'll uh, see if we get it running. <laughs> 